Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good to see you, Ambassador. Great to see you. Many years of this <laughs> painful uh, episode in our history, but that I would say to our gold star uh, families that are here and to every veteran who sacrificed, uh, we kept America safe uh, for over two decades, uh, and we can't lose we can't lose sight of that. Uh, that we did not have another 9/11. We did not uh, have uh, additional attacks on our homeland, uh, despite many issues uh, in this war that we absolutely should learn from. So. We've heard continuously, both in the media, from uh, colleagues on the other side of the aisle, and from the president, from President Biden, that he was stuck with the Doha agreement. That, no. you know, this was, he, his hands were tied, oh. the Trump administration tied his hands, he had no choice. No. And I just want to put out, Mr. Chairman, of the policies uh, that the Biden administration walked away from on day one, everything from the construction of the border wall, our membership in the World Health Organization, uh, the Biden administration uh, completely walked away from Trump's maximum pressure campaign, tried to get us back into a disastrous Iran nuclear deal, uh, rejoined the Paris Climate Accord, ended Remain in Mexico, canceled a Keystone Pipeline, $16 billion in investment, and I could go on. All of these things were reversed on the first month, but yet, we're supposed to believe that somehow he was handcuffed to this deal. Mr. Ambassador, let's go back to January of 2021. President Trump's still in office. His advisors go in, tell him, Mr. President, the Taliban haven't lived up to the half dozen conditions that were in the deal, minus one partially not attacking uh, troops, but in terms of entering negotiations with the Afghan government and other conditions. The Taliban didn't live up to the deal. What did President Trump do, uh, uh, Mr. Ambassador, as a result of that advice? Well, he, had, he had a stated goal of getting all U.S. troops out, Yes. right? Yes. But now he's told he didn't live up to the deal. What did President Trump do? Well, it'd be speculation, uh, of course. Well, no, but uh, yeah. it's not speculation that by January 19th, 2021, right. we still had Bagram Air Base. We did. Did we? Yes, we did. Is that the only air base in the world that is sandwiched between China, Russia, Iran, yeah. uh, and is a key platform for counterterrorism? Right. Did we still have Bagram Air Base? Uh, we did. Did we still have 2,500 U.S. special operators and intelligence professionals? We did. Did we still have five to 7,000 NATO troops? We did. Did we still have uh, a, over 10,000 contractors that were keeping the Afghan Air Force we flying? Did. And all of our intelligence assets, and plus, the most important thing, the message to the Afghan people and government that we stand with you, right? right? So let's fast forward. Just a few months later, right. did President Biden reject your advice for conditionality moving forward on the Doha Agreement? He decided uh, not to uh, make a withdrawal of the final uh, 2,500 conditional on a political agreement or leaving a force, a counterterrorism force behind. He essentially said, well, he no, he didn't essentially. He said to the world, we're pulling out. He was asked if there are conditions. He said, unconditionally, we're out, and that regardless of the consequences. Okay. Correct? Uh, because, uh, and when I have to say that, he thought if he stayed, he might have to go back to, uh, to war, likely to go back to war with the Taliban. But there were, but, but this is the misnomer. This is the false choice. Yes. We could take an approach like we did in, say, Colombia for 40 years, where we had trainers, we had assets, we had support, but we didn't put American troops in harm's way. There was a lot of middle ground of between places. unconditional full withdrawal and going back to any type of surge or war. True. Correct? True, correct. But those options weren't considered. And I'll just, I'll just ask you this. Um, we have had the senior leader of al-Qaeda, Zawahiri, as a guest of the Taliban. We now have reports of eight al-Qaeda training camps in Afghanistan. We have reports from the UN of tens of thousands of fighters, foreign fighters flowing into Afghanistan plus the, the ongoing threat of ISIS. Isn't the American homeland today safer than it was three years ago? 
Well, I would uh, respectfully ask you to um, ask the intelligence uh, community ours to uh, look at the data that the UN reports uh, is, uh, I wouldn't rely in other words, on the UN report. Okay, let me ask you, uh, uh, Chairman, if I could in indulge you. I think please, we're at the end here. Please. Does Al Qaeda and ISIS still have the intent to attack the United States and the West if given the opportunity to do so? Well, uh, no doubt, but I also want to point uh, that. So that's a yes. Our, I mean, just for the record, yeah, that's a yes, the, they yeah. fully but intend. They, that they have the intent. But I also want to say, uh, uh, Congressman, that our intelligence committee, from what I read uh, in the unclassified version, since we can't discuss classified uh, material here, believe that in the next year or two, uh, Al-Qaeda does not have the ability to attack the United States. I may be paraphrasing. From the, Afghanistan, the likelihood would be... The commander higher. of Central Command a year ago testified that ISIS will have reconstituted their capability to attack the West within six months, and that was a year ago from Afghanistan, yes, Mr. Ambassador. He did say, but I notice, again, the intelligence community since then, in the last few months, has highlighted successes by the Taliban against Daesh, against ISIS-K. I would respectfully suggest that for coming to a judgment on those, that you, uh, uh, I would, I would, I, I'm on the intelligence brief, committee, and I yeah. would just state for the record, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, thank you for your indulgence. Relying yeah. on terrorists like the Taliban and Al Qaeda well, to well. take out terrorists is a fool's errand and danger, and and very dangerous. We for shouldn't the, rely. Time has expired. Thank you, Mr. We Chairman. Should, uh,